Now we turn to the aftermath of the shooting that happened this past weekend in Burlington, Vermont, where a white man shot three young men of Palestinian descent. The attack has again stirred fears of rising Islamophobia and anti-Arab hatred. William Brangham spoke with two of the young men's mothers. On Saturday night, these three college students, Tassin Ahmed, Kinan Abdelhamid, and Hisham Awartani, were shot and wounded by a stranger. The attacker, whose motive is still unknown, has been charged with three counts of attempted murder. Earlier today, I spoke with Hisham's mother, Elizabeth Price. She had just arrived in the U.S. from her home in the West Bank, and with Kinan's mother, Tamara Tamimi, who had just arrived from her home in Jerusalem. Thank you both so much for, for joining us today. Um, I would love to hear both how your sons are doing right now. Um, Tamara, how is, um, how is Kinan doing? He's doing all right. Uh, he was discharged um, the day before yesterday, yesterday, actually. Um, I was able to speak to his uh, ER doctor by phone. Um, the hospital has been amazing in giving us uh, information. Um, the bullet uh, that the uh, defendant hit Kinan with uh, grazed his right glute, um, and I did it didn't penetrate. Uh, deeply, so he was incredibly lucky. Uh, he is, however, in a in a lot of pain. He, you know, the adrenaline of all of this has suddenly subsided, and so um, he's having trouble sleeping. Um, I'm very anxious to get to him because I have a feeling he's not just having trouble sleeping because of pain, but because of trauma. Um, so I'm quite concerned uh, for him. Um, and, but otherwise, you know, he was incredibly lucky and he sits with a lot of concern for his friends, um, that are, that are still in the hospital. And, and Elizabeth, I know Hisham was also quite seriously injured. What is the latest on his prognosis? Well, he is, he has what they call an incomplete spinal injury, um, which means that he has a sensation in his legs, but he can't move them. Um, from what I heard today talking with my husband, um, the bullet hit his clavicle and we're grateful that it hit his clavicle because if it hadn't, it might very well have just plowed through his spine and killed him. I mean, we're just so grateful that they're alive. I mean, we're just so thankful and it makes such a difference. We're, we're going to go see them. We're going to hug them. We're going to be with them. They're going to get sick of us. And we're just, I think we're just, I, I don't know if I'll let go of them for a while because um, it was a breast, you know, a hair's breath away from, uh, from death and, and one, I, I can, I can, I, I believe in my son. I believe that he will be able to walk again, but you can't bring a child back from death. I mean, as the country has focused on this, the tragedy that fell to your sons, everyone has been seeing these photographs of them as little boys knowing each other, obviously for many, many years. Can you just tell us a little bit about the relationship between these three young men? Sure. So the... Hisham and Kinan in particular um, have grown up to get. So Elizabeth um, was pregnant. We're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, was, uh, Elizabeth and I were pregnant very close uh, in time. So we were friends first, and then the two babies were born being friends because, quite frankly, they had no choice because we were always hanging out, and so the boys were hanging out. So they will tell you, if you ask them, that they're actually more brothers uh, than they are than they are just friends. The the third boy uh, that was with them is very very close to them as well. They uh, he uh, met them when I think they were in fourth grade, um, and they're all the three of them are very very like minded, um, and spend uh, they're the kind of boys that spend you know hours and hours and hours together huddled with their you know heads together in a room just talking talking about everything, talking about science, physics, astronomy, astrology, talking about playing chess. So they really grew up um, as an inseparable team. Exactly. At the night of the attack, the boys were walking down a quiet residential street to dinner at a family's house when their attacker approached them, said nothing, and then opened fire. Well, he, he came off the property and approached them. They, they stood to the side to let him pass since they were walk, probably walking down, you know, in a row. And he pulled out his gun, didn't say a word, shot them. I think Kinan was able to, to turn and run, uh, to flee. Uh, I think from what the Mars described, he, he was shot. Uh, so the men continued to shoot while Kinan was fleeing. 
uh, Hisham and his friend fell to the ground. Hisham said that all of a sudden he found himself on the ground. He didn't know he'd been shot. And he pulled his phone out of, of, of his pocket and there was blood on it. And his friend was lying next to him screaming in pain. And Hisham called the, MT, the, called the ambulance, called 911. And then the EMT came. Kinan, who is also trained as an EMT, ran for safety down the street. I understand that Kinan thought that his friends were dead um, and was picked up at the, by an EMT. And he, in the ambulance, said to the EMT, I'm an EMT and I could have saved my friends. So he thought that his friends were dead. And whereas, you know, her family thought that Kinan was dead. So, he, I mean, you can understand the trauma. I can't imagine having to go through that experience and fearing for your friends and not being certain of what happened to them. And um, as you know, there is still no quote unquote stated motive for this attack. But you both clearly believe that that your sons were targeted because they're Palestinian. That is that correct? Look, I, I don't know that I can't get into the assailant's mind, but I can say this. They, two of the three of them were wearing the traditional kufiya. And if he was close enough to be within earshot, they were also speaking a mix of Arabic and English as they uh, tend to do. Our boys were, you know, don't typically walk around with a kufiya, but right now in solidarity with what's happening to the Palestinian people, many Palestinians and other supporters of the Palestinian people are wearing the kufiya. To, to recognize and be in solidarity with those who are suffering in Gaza. I find it very, very difficult to believe that this was um, completely random. And I can say even further that if our boys looked like the assailant, if our boys spoke like him, if our boys were dressed exactly like him, I have a very hard time believing that this shooting would have happened. And in all cases, this was definitely motiv motivated by hate. No one, no one can do an act like this that isn't entirely fueled by hate. So I don't think they're surprised by what happened because I think they've been on edge and they felt like they've been targeted and they've seen being um, targeting. I mean, the, the, the killing of that young boy um, a few weeks ago, beginning of, of in, in October, means that there is there is a context in which this this crime happened, um, and as Tamara said, it was a, a, a hate driven crime because he did something so hateful to young men who he had no con contact with before. So it was a, a vicious attack on on them as 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 they were standing there um, and based on his how he perceived their identities. All right, Elizabeth Price and Tamara Timini, thank you both so much, and we are wishing you a wonderful reunion with your son later today. We're looking forward to it. We're going to hold them and not let go. <laughs> They'll be like squirming to get out. Right? Or maybe not Hisham. But... <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you.